Uh, just to give you a bit of flavor, um, Guyana to date, in terms of the largest public infrastructure jobs we've done, um, Skeldon comes in at number one, $200 million. Um, the Chetty Jagan International Airport Expansion Project comes in at $150 million. The MME, the Agricultural Project, which was developed in 78 to roughly 85, is approximately $100 million. I think it was two loans from the IDB, equal in 90, and given the government's counterpart, it came up to roughly a total of $100 million. And in terms of our largest road project, that's the ongoing West Coast Demerara at $44 million. The government recently awarded, I think, the East Coast project, but that's 46, so it's in the same sort of order, magnitude, same scale. And, of course, the Burbies Bridge was about $37 million or thereabouts. Um, so this is roughly what we have done uh, thus far. Um, and these projects have, in fact, taken quite a while for us to actually uh, uh, implement and develop in Guyana. Looking to the future, the projects take on a completely different scale. Uh, the Linden Lethem Road, for instance, is estimated at 300, in excess of $350 million. A deep water port could be from 200 million, I've seen an estimate for 200, I've seen an estimate for 500. So it's going to be greater than $250 million. The new Damarara River Bridge is greater than $350 million. The Crab Island facility, which the government is speaking about, they said that it's going to cost you know, up approximately $500 million. A mile of falls, and whether it's a mile or any other medium-sized hydro, this is the order of magnitude we're talking about. It's approximately $5 million per megawatt. So you're talking in excess of $750 million. Um, Upper Kanji Reservoir Scheme, if we were to introduce, uh, sorry, to expand our agricultural production in any sort of significant dynamic way, Upper Kanji would be one sort of candidate site, and Upper Kanji again is perhaps greater than $200 million. Um, and looking way down the line into the future on the horizon, um, an oil refinery, you're getting into silly numbers for us in Guyana right now, $5 billion, a pipeline to shore greater than a billion, pipeline to northern Brazil. So we're talking, I mean, this is really down the road. Um, but yeah, so the purpose of this slide was just to show really what we have done to date and what we have actually on the cards looking at in the future, which we perhaps can fund from the revenues of an infrastructure fund coming from the oil and gas sector to actually um, compensate for that difference. Um, I think it's, it's reasonable to assume that we need to do, we need to do things perhaps a bit differently. Um, because the, the, the shooting from the hip and sort of, you know, trying to prioritize which project makes sense is not going to work. We need to have a complete and holistic, I think, national infrastructure plan. Um, this needs to be, of course, looking into the future 15, 20 years, um, forward looking. And this plan, I believe, really needs, it has to be as a result of national consultation, and it really needs to have national consensus. Uh, the key thing here, it needs to transcend political cycles because I think it's, I mean, we can't afford uh, to have a government which develops a project, takes it almost to financial closure, the government changes, the new government completely disregards the old project. By the time they develop a new project, it'll be five years, they probably will, you know. We, we can't be going from pillar to post. We really do need to have an infrastructure plan which transcends political cycles. And the key thing here as well, I think personally, that there needs to be parliamentary approval. And parliamentary approval would actually send a very strong message and signal to the sector, to the supply chain, that they can in fact start investing. They can start investing in training their people, they can start investing in plants and equipment, they can start investing in what it takes to actually deliver on this national infrastructure plan. Um, looking at institutional options, because I believe this national infrastructure plan will need to find a home somewhere. And um, looking at the institutional options, um, again, I again, don't think that our current systems and our current institutions perhaps are fit for purpose. So looking at what we could possibly do in terms of managing uh, the, the huge programs we are looking at in the future, um, we could establish uh, an authority or an agency. 
this is in fact in the UK they have the infrastructure projects authority infrastructure and projects authority sorry and basically the infrastructure and projects authority in the UK it's uh, it reports to, to the Treasury it doesn't report to the Department of Transport it actually reports to the Treasury Department and um, and they're responsible for planning sort of seeking financing delivering and actually quality assuring all the major projects in the UK so you're Another option could be, as our colleagues in Trinidad have done, they have established a special purpose company called the National Infrastructure Development Company. Um, and NITCO, again, is not part of the Ministry of Transport or Public Works. It's independent of that. Uh, it has a CEO, it has a board. And NITCO, in effect, manages the major projects in Trinidad and Tobago. My own concern about perhaps these two models is that given the sort of fractious and acrimonious nature of our politics in Guyana, whenever the government changes, the CEO will be gone, your board will be gone for both your IPA type model or NICO, which again leads to these sorts of you know, very disruptive uh, periods um, in our cycle. So I'm not sure myself uh, whether either of these two options could possibly work. What I think in fact is needed is a National Infrastructure Commission. Something perhaps similar to the, the Public Procurement Commission where you have designated um, you know, parties appointing members into the commission and the commission in essence uh, will, will report to Parliament. And the commission will have that security of tenure which goes beyond your political cycles so they're allowed to actually seek the financing for these big projects, implement these big projects, because they take time. These large projects take time to actually bring to the table and get the financial close. So you'll have the commission with perhaps an executive arm, and the skill sets of the staff in an executive arm, um, we're talking different things. It's not just engineering. You're talking project financing, experience in public-private partnership, and implementation of major projects and um, experience with complex procurement and sort of detail engineering in many fields. So this is essentially um, what I think could be a solution to how we manage um, infrastructure and what we do with that. Data.